Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Stitch Nation. My name is Kennedy. I'm the social media specialist here at Sewing Machines Plus, and I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. It is a great morning today. I have an amazing guest to bring on for you guys today, and she is going to show you all about the fun of thread, and she has got a really awesome project for you. We have Ellen March from Sulky. We are so excited to have her on today. It's going to be awesome and so much fun. But before we go ahead and get started, I just want to run a few things by you guys and tell you about some of the things that we've got going on today and through the rest of the week. So obviously you're here at Stitch Nation today. This happens every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And we also have a show running every single day at 10 a.m. PST. So if you are ever on our YouTube, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so that way you guys can watch more of our SP live shows and learn some more things. It's really awesome. We've always got something going on. It's great. Um, but we also have SP live going on tomorrow. So you'll see Blaine. And I think me and Blaine are gonna be off on an adventure. I'm not sure yet, but it'll it'll be a surprise for you guys. But we might be driving around some places, you guys will see. Um, but We've got SMP Live. Um, we also have our new product party coming up. So if you guys are local, definitely come in and stop by and hang out with us on Friday and Saturday at our retail locations. Um, it's going to be so much fun. We're having a full day with presenters, with educators from all over the country coming in to teach on some of these awesome brand new machines. So it's going to be really exciting. If you guys were looking at that Luminaire 3, we're going to have it on the floor and ready for you guys to try out and see. It's going to be so much fun. Um, and, and just, it's a great time. Just coming out with us and meet, meet some of your favorite SMP people. Blaine will be there. Everyone will be on there and just come, come hang out. We'll have food and, um, snacks and giveaways. It's, it'll just be great. It'll be a great day to spend your Friday and Saturday. Um, but other than that, we also have SoFest coming up. So mark your calendar, September 12th through the 16th and submissions are now open. So if you guys have a garment or a home decor project that you think could win the crowd, submit it into our SoFest and you might have the chance to win some really awesome prizes. So with that, um, I think that's all I've got today. I want to say hi to some of you guys, though. Let's see. Let's see who we've got here. Ginger Israel, Pamela Nestler. Good morning. Good morning. Let's see where you guys watching from today. Dun, dun, dun. Connie Humphreys from Tennessee. Good morning. Um, we just had the brother convention in Tennessee. Blaine just got back from Tennessee. Nashville. Woo woo. <laughs> we got, oh, Roger, everyone's saying hi to you. <laughs> All right, we've got Joanne Hole from Vancouver, Linda Brooks from South Carolina. It's so nice to see all the familiar faces on here again, and just thanks for coming on and hanging out with me again. It's it's awesome. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started with today's episode, and let's say hi to Ellen. Hi, Ellen, everyone. Hello. How are you? Great. It's great to be on. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Of course. Um, we are so excited to have you on. And But real quick before we get started, where can we find you after today's show? Do you have like Facebook or Instagram or anything like that to where they can see more of your projects? Absolutely. So sulky.com really is your one-stop hub for all of those things. You can link to all of our social accounts there. And we have a really active blog with lots and lots of free projects, <gasps> tips, techniques, tutorials, all of that good stuff. Awesome. So that is it. So sulky.com go. And that is your one-stop shop for all things sulky and new tips and tricks and some projects. Awesome. All right, Ellen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you get started. Um, but I will be back behind the scenes if you guys have questions and all of the products from today's show are linked down in the description. So if you guys want to shop and you like some of the thread, I know the poly sparkle thread is really, really amazing. I love it so much. So make sure you guys check that out. And um, I will go ahead and let you take it away, Ellen. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, you know, fall is right around the corner here. And you know, Halloween is coming up. And you were talking about the poly sparkle thread. I absolutely love sewing for Halloween. It is probably my favorite holiday to sew for. Um, because we get to use all of these fun threads that give us all these great special effects for our projects. So the poly sparkle thread that you were just talking about is a 30 weight polyester thread and it has flecks of metallic running through it. 
So unlike a, an original metallic thread or a sulky hollow shimmer or sliver thread, those are our other metallic threads, this one sews just like polyester thread. So you don't have to make all of those machine adjustments that you typically do when you're working with a more traditional metallic thread. You know, our hollow shimmer and our sliver threads are a flat thread. So when you're sewing with them, you need to minimize any twisting that the thread might do on its way to the needle. So you have to take some certain precautions um, into account and do some machine adjustments in order to sew those threads so that they look great every single time. But Poly Sparkle is a little bit thicker in weight as well. And like I said, it just runs through the needle so nice and smooth. And you do get more of a subtle sparkle when you're working with that thread because it just has those flecks of metallic rather than the entire thread um, being made of that metallic um, material. So it's really cool. If you have struggled with using metallic thread in the past, I highly suggest giving the Poly Sparkle a try. You do have to take into account that it is a little bit thicker thread, so you need a larger eye needle as well. And I'm going to be talking about that as we work our way through this project uh, because it's a neat way to quilt your items. Um, because it is that thicker weight, you really see it very well. It pops off of the surface of your fabric, um, so it's a really cool special effect. Um, I'm also going to talk about our 50 weight cotton thread, which is kind of what we would consider our more all-purpose type weight of thread at Sulky, and it's a thinner weight, so it's great for piecing, it's great for constructing quilts, um, and it's a very high quality, long staple Egyptian cotton thread. So it's very high end, luxurious thread and great for those projects where um, you're doing paper piecing, which is what I'm going to show you today as well. Um, so we can kind of get into things if you want to start up the slide deck. On the very first page of this deck that I created, you'll see a picture of the project that I'm going to take you through today. This is one of our most popular fall projects. Um, we have reinvented it a couple of times, and you'll see how versatile the paper piecing portion of the pattern is um, because you can use it for lots of different things. I'm going to show you how to create this paper pieced pillow block. And you can use it to create a quilt, a table runner, a pillow, which is what I'm going to show you today. Um, you can even put it on a tote bag. You can turn it into an applique. So it has a lot of different uses. And that's what we're really about at Sulky is kind of showing you our interpretation of something. And then we want to see your take on it. We want to see what you do to make it your own um, and to get lots and lots of uses out of it. So if you haven't done paper piecing, which I see um, Gail has commented, she's never done paper piecing. We have an absolutely phenomenal product for paper piecing. So foundation paper piecing is when you print your pattern directly onto paper and then you sew through the paper with your fabric on the wrong side of the paper and you are piecing your little pieces of paper along the back side of the paper and sewing across the lines that are printed on your paper. And you'll see that um, on my PowerPoint as we go along as well, so that you get a better idea of how this all comes together. So I'm not sure, is my PowerPoint on the screen? Or there we go. Okay. So on the left side, you will see that foundation paper pieced pumpkin pillow pattern. So uh, a lot of alliteration there. I'm big on alliteration. I was an editor in my former life. <laughs> but at any rate, that is our free pattern at sulky.com. You can grab up this digital pattern at any time and it will download to your Sulky account and you can just print it out and you will have this pattern always accessible once you download it to your computer. So along with that pattern, like I said, I'm also going to talk about our Halloween Haunt six pack thread assortment of the 50 weight cotton thread. These are all those great sulky colors 
um, that are going to work with so many of your Halloween projects and fall projects as you work your way through the season. Also listed is our Haunting Halloween six pack of Poly Sparkle Thread. And this is that 30 weight thread I was talking about. And I'm gonna be showing you or giving you some inspiration for how to quilt this pillow using these great sparkly threads. Paper Solvi is the world's best friend when you're doing paper piecing. So as I mentioned, when I gave you a little bit of overview on the technique of foundation paper piecing, you need to start off with a sheet of paper that you are printing your design onto. Typically, you would use just regular old printer paper. As we know, that's kind of on the thick side, right? And we are already sewing through our layers of fabric. Now we've got a layer of paper to contend with as well. So when you are done sewing all of your lines on your paper and creating your paper pieced pattern, then you have to tear away the paper. And a lot of times designers will tell you to shorten your stitch length so that you are almost perforating the paper as you sew across all of those lines. I find this really problematic because a lot of paper piecing pa patterns have very small pieces to them. And that's really the benefit of doing foundation paper piecing because you're trimming your fabric pieces after you're sewing. So after you sew your two uh, fabric pieces together, you'll fold the paper back and trim your seam allowance. So everything's very accurate and precise and neat and tidy. But if you are actually perforating that paper along that stitch line, when you go to sew subsequent stitching lines, your paper might start to disappear on you or, you know, tear away on its own. And we don't want that. We want our pattern to stay intact while we are constructing it. And that way, um, you know, we can see all of those lines as we're working our way through the pattern. It's not tearing away on us. I also sometimes find that when you shorten your stitch length, when you are piecing, it becomes very difficult to unpick those stitches if we make a mistake. And, you know, nobody's perfect. We have our seam ripper next to us all the time. And the shorter the stitch length, the harder it's going to be to take those out if and when we need to. So I like to keep my stitch length at the standard setting. You can do a 3.0 um, or even a 3.5, uh, depending on your pattern and how small your pieces are. And uh, I like to use paper salty. It's very, very lightweight. It's a, a little step above like tissue weight, okay? But it's, it's still strong and you can fold along it and sew along it and it washes away completely when your piecing is complete. I know. So you can still tear away some of it if you want to, tear away the bulkier um, portions of it. But what I like to do is I wet a Q-tip or a cotton swab and I run it across all of my stitch lines until it is saturated and the paper solvy starts to dissolve along those stitch lines. And then you simply just lift off the excess and toss it or save it for some liquid stabilizer. And there is no trace of it whatsoever. And you look like a total pro with your foundation paper piecing. It is unbelievably awesome. I have also done some more intricate paper piecing blocks with very small pieces, and I leave the paper solvy totally intact until my item has been constructed fully. So if it's a quilt, I wait until the whole thing is quilted and bound, and then I throw it in the washing machine and the paper solvy dissolves completely. So you don't have to pick out little pieces of paper and worry that your stitches are going to pop. Um, and it's so amazing. So I'm gonna show you that in action. Also, needles. I did mention you need a little bit larger needle when you're using that 30-weight poly sparkle thread. I recommend a 9014. And for this, we're using a 9014 quilting needle. 
we like to recommend Oregon needles here at Sulky. And I'll be using a 7010 universal for the piecing. Because we're using that thin 50 weight cotton thread, we need a much smaller eye needle. Also, Sulky KK2000. This is what I use to build quilt sandwiches. And if we're going to quilt the top of our pillow, uh, we will want to use that KK2000 to kind of secure our pillow top to a piece of batting so that we can add lots of quilting to it before we construct the pillow. So these are all the products that I'm going to be showcasing in the tutorial. But first off, we're going to need to print the paper solvy pattern, or excuse me, the foundation paper piecing pattern onto the paper solvy. So you'll want to uh, select just the pattern page to print on your paper solvy so that you don't accidentally print your entire pattern onto paper solvy. So just that one page is what you need to print. And you're going to see that there are two sections of the pumpkin. We're gonna be creating the left side, and then we're gonna be creating the right side of the pumpkin. And then we're gonna sew them down that center seam, and it's going to magically create our paper pieced pumpkin. And this is a really great pattern for beginner paper piecers because the pieces are a little bit larger than maybe what you would typically find if you're making, let's say, a foundation pieced um, mug rug or something with a lot of tiny little pieces. These are larger, more manageable pieces. I even um, used some jelly roll strips that I had left over from a strip pieced quilt, and I used those for the big pieces of the pumpkin. So you will print these out and then cut along the outer darkest lines of the pattern. So it's basically two rectangles that you're going to cut out because you don't need all that excess paper solvy around the pattern pieces. Then you're going to install your, your needle and uh, um, insert a bobbin and thread your needle with that 50 weight cotton thread. And you can just choose one of the colors that's in that great Halloween palette um, for the piecing that you want to do. You can pick the orange, the light orange, the dark orange, whatever most coordinates with the fabrics that you're using. And you can go ahead and use prints, dive into your fabric stash, find a bunch of orange fabric prints that coordinate and use those for your, you know, the meat of the pumpkin and dive into your stash and find something for the stem. And then you'll need your background fabric as well, just for that pumpkin block. And that's another great thing about foundation paper piecing is they are truly scrap piecing or scrap projects. So all those little bits of fabric that we cannot, uh, you know, find it in our hearts to throw out, this is the time to pull those out and use them in this project. So on the next slide, you will see a general overview of paper piecing. So each section of your pattern is going to be labeled with a number, and that is the order that your fabric is going to be added and stitched to the paper. So it makes it really easy to navigate. You can see in the image I have um, the number one is our first fabric. The number two will be our second fabric that we're adding. So you also need to prepare those little fabric scraps to make sure that the fabrics you have intended for each piece will fit the entire size of the piece that is needed. So you can kind of audition them over the right side of your pattern. And then when you're adding them to the wrong side, you know that you have enough. Um, also take into account that you do need seam allowances. So your fabric piece needs to extend at least a quarter inch beyond your joining seam line. So the line between number one and number two, it will need to extend on either side a quarter of an inch to make sure that you have enough for your seam allowance. So you'll place your first fabric scrap right side up and place the second fabric wrong side up over the first fabric. Then you'll place your pattern face up over the second fabric along the wrong side. So you can see how you're building your block underneath of your paper. 
Then you can fold your paper along that line that's joining the two sections and make sure you have enough fabric extending beyond that line to account for your seam allowance. Then you'll stitch along the line that's joining one and two. And if I'm going too fast or if this is a little bit confusing to you, um, all of this information is in the free pattern. So along with those pattern pieces, you will also get these full instructions to follow. So you don't need to take notes or, um, you know, rewind, so to speak. <laughs> um, all of that is explained in the pattern as well. So on the next slide, you will see what it looks like from the other side um, when you're building these first two uh, pieces. And you'll see that my stem fabric is much, much larger at this stage than the background fabric that I sewed on for number two, for piece number two. And the only reason for that is because you trim it afterwards. So if you start with two fabric scraps that are much larger than you need, sew them before you trim them. I find I'll get into the groove of the foundation paper piecing pro process. And if I cut it too soon, um, you know, sometimes I'll cut off my seam allowance, you know, inadvertently, something like that. So you can keep your pieces as large as you need um, and trim them afterwards. So if you could go to the next slide, you'll see what I'm talking about. And we'll just catch up for a minute. I see a lot of people saying, I love paper piecing. That is great. And some people still taking notes. That's great. All right. So here's the other. Um, I might have a little bit of a delay, but here is the other slide where you can see that much larger piece for the stem. So now you're going to refold your paper pattern along that previous fold line, the one that we folded back to test our seam allowance. And then you'll use your rotary cutter, mat and ruler. I find your clear ruler and rotary cutter is really your best friend for the paper piecing. It just allows you to get a very accurate seam allowance. So you'll fold your uh, paper back so that you're not cutting the paper and then trim your seam allowance along that line. And at this point too, you can kind of clean up that much larger piece if you happen to have a larger piece like I did. Um, and you can kind of clean that up along the edge of your pattern. All right, so now we're gonna press our fabrics open um, along that wrong side. And you will continue in the same way. There you can see I've trimmed my seam allowance on my next seam line. And that's how it looks when you fold your paper back. So you're not cutting through the paper, just through the fabric. So now that everything is pressed open, now you can trim off that extending extra long piece. Just trim it flush with the edge of your pattern. And now you've got two um, fabric pieces pieced together on the right side. And your pattern is face up facing you. So you will just continue to add more fabric pieces according to the pattern and in the order in which the pattern is telling you to sew it. So you'll follow suit with number three, four, and so on. So you can see that I used a jelly roll. So I've got a really long strip of yellow that I was just kind of working off of for that outer piece of that pumpkin. All right. And don't forget your seam allowances and keep auditioning those pieces before you add them um, to make sure that they are large enough. All right. So you will follow suit until you have the left side of your pumpkin and the right side of your pumpkin completed. And you can see they are two separate pieces and we're going to put them right sides together and match up the line on our pattern. Do you see in that second image there how the right side of the pattern is not symmetrical with the left side? So when you are piecing it together, it's very important to match along that seam line rather than matching up your raw edges of the pattern. You can see how the top fabric is kind of at an angle to the bottom one. But once we open it up to the right side, 
you will see our pattern is um, completely rectangular. All right. So there's our pattern piece. And at this point, um, oh, I think we went one too far on the slide deck. There we go. So at this point, we've got it sewn together along that center seam. And you will want to remove your paper solvey. Now, if you want to keep it intact and you plan on washing your finished piece, you certainly can leave the paper solvey intact. You can build the rest of your block. You can construct your entire pillowcase and then throw it in the washing machine and your paper solvey will be gone. And if you plan on quilting this further, that paper solvey is going to give you a little bit more stabilization it is technically a stabilizer as well. So it's gonna give you some more stabilization during your quilting process. And then, like I said, it will all wash away once you throw your pillowcase in the washing machine. But if you want to get rid of it at this point, simply turn it over to the wrong side. And like I said, you can remove larger pieces by just running a wet Q-tip or cotton swab along all those seam lines until the paper solvey begins to release along the stitching, and then you can simply lift it away and discard it. For any smaller pieces, you can fully saturate them. You can put them under some running water and give it a little bit of agitation, and it will release and dissolve right away. And then you'll just want to let it dry flat on a towel, and once it's all dried, you can give it a good press Make sure all of your seams are nice and flat so that you can move forward with the pillow construction. So really, really easy way to do some really impressive looking piecing. And I mean, I have seen art quilts done this way. I have seen people um, create photos of other people, pixelate them and do foundation paper piecing. It's really, really amazing what you can do just as even a novice quilter. Um, with this technique. All right, so if you'll go to the next slide, you'll see the beginning of putting together the pillowcase. And like I said, you could get this far, let's say with your second row of border fabrics, because I've got the first row is added using the same background fabric that is used um, when we're doing our paper piecing. I use that for the upper, lower, and side edges of the first border. Then I chose a different coordinating print for the next border. And then this one has a third border even still. So three different coordinating fabrics um, to create the size pillow form that I happen to have on hand. So you could add even more borders or less borders if you wanted to make a smaller or larger pillow. You could get to this point with your second row of border fabric and do three of them and create a really nice pumpkin table runner. All you would have to do is stitch your three blocks together at this point once you get your, your orange border on, quilt it really nicely, maybe using some sulky 30 weight cotton blendables thread, which is one of my favorite things to quilt with as well. Or you could even create a larger quilt or wall hanging using this block right here. But we are going to take it a little further and create a pillow with an envelope closure. So if you'll go to the next, there you go. Um, you'll add that next row of um, border fabrics. And now is where we want to add our quilting. So this is where you can really have fun with it. Like we mentioned earlier, the poly sparkle would be a really fun way to quilt this piece, giving it a subtle sparkle, you know, not super in your face sparkle, but just a little bit of sparkly interest, um, which would look really cool if you're doing a table runner, maybe for your Thanksgiving table as well. That's the cool thing about this pumpkin design as well is it can take you from Halloween decor all the way through the Thanksgiving holiday. So really, really um, versatile in that regard. You could also quilt, like I mentioned, with 30 weight blendables thread. Um, our blendables thread is randomly dyed 
every two and a half to five inches across the thread length. So you don't get a repeating pattern. So let's say you wanted to do some straight line quilting or some matchstick quilting across the length or width of your table runner or quilt or wall hanging or pillow. You won't get the same repeating pattern of colors across your piece um, because of that random dye process. So really, really neat. And for the 30 weight blendables, just like the 30 weight poly sparkle, that 9014 needle is what you're going to need. And since we're not going to see the wrong side of our pillow, you can just use a bobbin weight thread or that 50 weight cotton thread in the bobbin when you are adding the quilting. If you want your quilting to be seen on the wrong side in the case of a table runner or quilt or wall hanging, then you can also use the 30 weight poly sparkle or 30 weight blendables in the bobbin as well. All right, so to quilt this, since we don't have a backing or batting, um, I suggest adding those pieces. Now, this is not in the pattern because the pattern directs you to create a, a pillow, as I'm showing you here. Um, but we want our stitches to have something to grab onto, and we want to quilt through those layers. So after you get your pillow top to this, uh, to this place, you'll cut a piece of batting to the same dimensions um, or a little bit larger and cut a backing piece to sandwich your batting in between and cut your backing even larger than your batting so that, you know, in case you have a little bit of stretching or you need something to hold on to, if you want to do free motion quilting, you have that extra fabric to contend with, and then you can trim it down once your quilting is complete. So, Use your KK2000 temporary spray adhesive um, to attach your backing, um, batting, and your pillow front. And for your backing on this, since it's going to be inside of your pillow, you can just use a piece of muslin um, or some other scrap fabric that you might have on hand. And quilt it to the nines or do some subtle quilting. You can quilt in the ditch of those border seams. You can add some pumpkin um, uh, little tendrils, um, maybe using that green poly sparkle thread. So lots of different options. You can even do a mixture of poly sparkle all around the pumpkin, giving yourself a sparkly pumpkin, and then use the 50 weight cotton thread uh, to quilt along the outer borders. So it really lends itself to a lot or a little bit of quilting, um, however you want to personalize it. So after your quilting is complete, you'll just trim up your pillow front, and then we're going to create our envelope style closure for the back of the pillow. And I love these kinds of closures for pillows because it's so quick and easy. You don't have to deal with putting in a zipper, but it's still allows you to use a pillow form, or you could even use your holiday pillows. Maybe they have a holiday message on them and just slip them inside of your pumpkin cover uh, and take you through the Thanksgiving holiday and then simply remove them, launder them and store them for next year. And now your holiday pillows are out and ready to go. So kind of double duty with your holiday decor. All right. So for our envelope closure, we've got two fabric rectangles, and we're going to fold one uh, edge of our fabric rectangle to the wrong side and give it a good press. And I make sure it's quite a wide border because you might see it a little bit here and there, and we just don't want the wrong side of our fabric showing um, really at any time um, while we're using the pillow or displaying it. So then you will overlap those two fabric rectangles with the folded edge along the top. I actually like to fold both edges um, so that they're nice and clean and all the raw edges are contained. Um, but you will overlap those and that's how you're going to insert your pillow form. Once you overlap them, based along the edges where they overlap along the uh, upper and lower edges, and then you will use that as basically one fabric piece for your pillow backing. Now we're going to layer this. You'll see on the next slide, we're gonna layer our um, overlapped pieces over our pillow front. 
just like we would constructing any other pillow. And you can pin along the perimeter and you're just going to sew along the perimeter. We don't need to leave an opening for turning because our envelope opening is how we're going to turn it right side out. So uh, sew along the perimeter. And then my little tip when you are creating pillows, you'll see on the next slide, I like to taper my corners. And by that, I mean you've got your stitching at a 90 degree angle because you're following your nice pillow square or rectangle, but I'm actually going to taper in my stitching. Um, I guess you would say, what is this? A 30 degree angle on one side. Um, I don't even do it that precise. I know there's a measurement you can follow and that's actually in the pattern itself. Um, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. Basically, you're going to crisscross in front of your 90 degree angle so that you're tapering that corner with your stitches. And it's going to look like you have almost curved edges along your pillow. But when you go to turn it right side out, your pillow looks completely square. This is how you eliminate those little dog ears that you see on a lot of pillows. And sometimes I actually like those dog ears if I'm adding tassels or something to the corner. I kind of like that little folded look. Um, but for something like this, um, we want to make sure that our pillow is nice and square looking. So you have to actually overcompensate at those corners and taper them down. Um, it sounds weird, but it works. All right, so you can see my crisscrossy stitching lines and um, it looks a little, um, I don't know, it looks, it, it doesn't look as professional, I guess, um, as it could. You could certainly taper in those lines and eliminate your 90 degree stitching altogether. Um, but for the purposes of showing you that 90 degree stitch line versus the tapered line, that's why I left that in for the photo so you could see the difference between stitching at um, a true corner or tapering along that corner. So after you taper your corners, you can trim your seam allowances and trim your corner point, um, you know, next to but not touching your stitch line. And that's going to eliminate bulk at your corners as well and make sure that your pillow form fills it out really, really nicely. And then you will see our finished um, pillow. And now all you need to do is stuff your pillowcase with your pillow form. And if you do find that your pillow form isn't filling out the corners quite as much or you want it a little bit fluffier, um, you know, all pillow forms are not created equal. And especially if you're using an existing pillow that maybe you already have on your couch and you're just dressing it up for the holiday um, or for the season, rather, you can either wrap your pillow form in a scrap um, rectangle of batting to add a little bit more oomph to it. Or you can simply stuff some fiber fill along the corners and even along the seam line after you get your pillow form inside. And that'll just kind of fluff it out and you know really make your pillow look nice and firm. And so then you can see the back of the pillow with that envelope closure and then the front of the pillow and the pillow um, on a chair. So that is the project overview. And it really, really does come together rather quickly. And you will certainly get addicted to foundation paper piecing and want to try it again and again. If you do purchase a pack of paper solvy, it does come with 12 sheets. So you could print out your pumpkin several times and have the versatility of creating that larger quilt um, or table runner or wall hanging um, and really, really making this your own. So you'll have plenty to play with, practice with, um, and plenty of pumpkins to print out. So I hope you all enjoy that project. We have lots more at sulky.com as well in our free project area. Um, so you can find lots of inspiration for using really great special effects thread, especially this time of year 
We're always talking about glowy and metallic um, and the poly sparkle and all of those fun things we get to incorporate for these upcoming holidays. That is so awesome, Hella Ellen. I so enjoyed it. And one thing that I know about the Poly Sparkle is with those paper piecings, it's such a great way to add dimension to the project and kind of lift it in a way and like make it really look not 3D, but you know what I mean, where it just kind of lifts it and brings it to life a little bit. And I love that about the Poly Sparkle. It's so, and it's so easy to work with. If I know I, used to work in our retail store. So I know a lot of people have a fear of sparkle thread and shiny thread because some machines just do not like it. But Poly Sparkle really is one of the best for working on just any machine. It really helps and it's just so nice and is I've never had a problem with it. It's, it's awesome. I really love it. 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to slow your machine down, which normally no. with regular or original metallic threads and those hollow shimmers and stuff, You've got to slow your machine way down. Um, it's finicky in the bobbin. Yes. Um, you know, people use thread directors to help, you know, their thread roll off the, the spool properly. And with the poly sparkle, you don't have to. And you can use it for machine embroidery as well. So high, high speed sewing. Say, yeah. Somebody asked if they could use it for embroidery. And the answer is yes. So if you sew and embroider, this sparkle thread will be perfect for you. Perfect. Get all the get all the things covered, all the all the corners covered. <laughs> and cool exactly. thing too. Got the whole thing covered. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Well, let me see if we have any questions. Um, somebody asked long arm in the poly sparkle thread. I mean, I don't see why not, as long as you have a needle that works with it and that I that's the only issue that I could see running into. Um, let's see. Everyone's just loving the project. <laughs> it's such a perfect one for fall. It's like simple, but it still has enough. And it's perfect if you have scraps, like Ellen was saying, if you just have a bunch of jelly roll scraps, maybe that you don't use, you can mix and match colors. It's awesome. I mean, you could even do a summer pumpkin. I don't see why not. <laughs> sure. You could do a summer one, a spring one. There's all the different you options. You could do like a Cinderella pumpkin, you know? There you go. Make it super sparkly. Yes. Oh, you <laughs> could do it. Oh, yes. And then you could even do like some applique shoes maybe. I don't know. See, this is just me getting inspired by the pumpkin. <laughs> there you go. And, you know, you can really dress it up as much as you want. Like I said, if you're going to choose a lot of print fabrics from your stash for the pumpkin um, and sparkly thread and all this and that, or you could go a little understated like I did with all the solids. Yeah. Um, so it's really about your own decor style and yeah. what you like. Yeah. I was thinking even you could do like a black and white, like do different black and white patterns and put them all together. I mean, the options are really endless. It's all up to you. And I'm sure everyone in the comments is thinking of ideas too, because it's just, it's one of those patterns, which is awesome. And the fact that it's free, I'll put the link down below as well. You guys can go check it out, but you can, you can do whatever you want with it. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, I think we have some giveaways to give away today. Um, Ellen, I know you had a couple. Um, what were you planning on giving away today? I do. So we have two giveaways. One giveaway is going to be that Halloween haunt six pack assortment of 50 weight cotton thread with a pack of paper salvi. And the other one is going to be that six pack of uh, poly sparkle thread, the haunting Halloween assortment with a pack of paper salvi. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up on the screen and we will randomly draw a winner. So let's add this and let's spin. Let's get some music going on in here. Um, but you guys heard it here. I know a lot of you guys were talking about doing a giveaway with the poly sparkle thread. So today is your lucky day. <laughs> Let's see who's going to win today's giveaway. So this one, Renee Bolton, congrats. You have just won. So we will do, for her, we'll do the um, normal at the top. So let me add this. So we will do, so Renee, you're going to get the Halloween Haunt, the six pack of the cotton thread with the paper salvi. And then our next one will be the poly sparkle thread with the paper salvi so let's remove this get this back on here and let's spin again let's see who's gonna win today dun, dun, dun. 
Roxanne Sexton. Congratulations. You have just won a brand new stash of some poly sparkle thread and some paper salty. So congrats, ladies. Awesome. And I have a few giveaways as well, um, but I will go ahead and wait to do that with when we get Ellen. But I just want to say thank you so much for coming on today, Ellen. I We had so much fun. I know everyone was just loving today's presentation and I hope everybody got inspired today. And I just thank you so much for coming on. Great. Yes. Thank you for awesome. having me. Had a great of time. Course. And then once again, so for giveaway winners, are we, do you guys have an email that they can email and reach out to for claiming those or it would it be? Um, Yes, you can email okay. um, customer care at sulky.com and we'll take okay. care of you. Perfect. All right. So they, if you guys just want to go ahead and email customer care at sulky.com and just let them know that you came from today's episode and we will get those shipped out to you. Awesome. All right, Ellen. Well, you have an amazing rest of your day and I will do a couple more giveaways and I will send them all off. But thank you again for coming on. Yes. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right, you guys. Okay, so I just have a couple more giveaways I want to give away. I had to get involved and do some giveaways. You know me. I had to do some. But let's go ahead and see what we're going to give away today. So I wanted to give away a brother BM3850 today because we're all talking about paper piecing and talking about all different things. And why not, you know, maybe you've got grandkids that you want to teach how to sew. So this is a perfect starter machine for anyone just getting into it. And you can do anything with it. And the Poly Sparkle thread and all the new thread that you just found out about can work with that machine. So let's go ahead and see who is going to win today's machine. Let's see. Let's see see who it's gonna be sulky of america <laughs> linda von bank congratulations you have just won a brand new brother bm 3850 so go ahead i'll put this on the screen right down below make sure you guys head to smplive.tv to claim your prize fill out the little form there and we will get you that brand new machine Awesome. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more giveaway today. And that is going to be a $100 gift card. So if you saw any of the new products today that you found and that you want to try out, maybe the paper solvy. I know I've got an order that I need to play soon so I can go play. Um, but any of the products today, you can get a brand new gift card and shop away. So let's go ahead and see who is going to win this gift card today. Dun, dun, dun. The suspense. I always say it, but the suspense, I just, so exciting. Carol Lombardi. <laughs> Congratulations, Carol. You just bought a brand new $100 gift card. So go ahead and head and to smplive.tv to claim your prize, and we will get you all taken care of. All right, you guys, let me take this off here. Put my face back up here. All right. So that was today's episode, episode six. Can you guys believe how far we've gotten with shows already? I feel like I've been doing them for not even that long and we're already on episode six. So it's so much fun. Thank you guys again for coming and joining me and hanging out with me as we learn new things and new techniques and new tips. It's just, it's so much fun. A nice, fun little hour every day. Um, but make sure you guys are liking and subscribed to our YouTube channel and make sure you hit that notification bell right next to the subscribe button so that way you guys know every time we go live, we have a video out, um, it just lets you know all the new things. And make sure you guys are liking our page on Facebook and following us on Instagram because we also do posts on there and we post behind the scenes, we post... Um, you know, just fun stuff over there. It's a great way to keep keep up with all the SMP happenings going on throughout the week. Um, but again, make sure you guys tune in tomorrow for SMP Live. It's going to be a really great show. We're going to do some behind the scenes of the um, new product party that we're having in our stores. So you'll be able to check out our stores tomorrow. It's going to be really fun. And then um, the new product party, if you guys are local again, please try and make it out. I think, um, I'm not sure if we're going to go live. I'm not sure quite yet, but if we do, we'll announce it on our Facebook, so make sure you guys are on there, so that way you know um, whenever we have announcements or anything like that. All right, you guys. Well, I think that finishes it up for me today, um, but again, I'll say it once, I'll say it again. Thank you for joining. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll hope to see you guys tomorrow. I will be on SMP Live a little bit tomorrow, so you'll see me on there. Um, but I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your Wednesday, and we will see you guys tomorrow. See you later. Bye. Thank you.